It was 100 years ago tomorrow that WWL radio first hit the airwaves. And over the century, there were times when some people thought radio wouldn't last, if you can believe it, mm -hmm. like with the invention of television or when music videos were popular. But today, the station is still thriving. Tonight, Meg Ferris begins a two-part look back at the station and its early years. The News Authority, WWL. 100 years ago, the Jesuits had a vision. It really is a physics experiment at Loyola University that births WWL Radio. A vision that launched and sustained well-known personalities' careers and, yes, even saved lives. So that first broadcast, March 31st, 1922, was very simple by today's standards. Someone played some songs on an upright piano, and then the president of Loyola, Father Cassidy, asked for money. <laughs> But WWL Radio quickly went from a fundraising tool to national prominence. It was among those authorized to run at the highest power allowed for any AM station in the U.S. 50,000 watts clear channel. I mean, you know, the blowtorch of the South. I mean, you could hear us all over, the, all over the country pretty much, especially at night. And they listened. The Blue Room, you'll say it's magnificent, presents the music of Leon Kellner. In studios from Loyola University, then to the Motleon, and then to the Roosevelt Hotel, where people nationwide were entertained by big stars performing in the Blue Room from the 30s to the 60s. And there was the popular Dawn Busters. I come from Louisiana. Hooray, hooray, hooray. The morning show of choice way before TV. And there was the popular and eclectic talk radio host, Bob Ruby. That was in the 70s, where announcing the time of day was even sponsored. So it was always King Edward cigar time. I had just been fired from working at a women's shoe store in Lakeside because I didn't do a very good job selling women's shoes. But Bob was, was brilliant. I learned a lot from Bob. And I WWL radio host Scoot was just 19 when his father delivered a bill in person to Ruby. It was for promoting his show by skywriting. Ruby had just fired his producer and needed a new one, and on a whim, asked Scoot's dad if he knew any young, responsible guys. September 15th, 2006, Monday Night Football, Saints coming back in the Dome after the devastation of Katrina. Fifty years later, Scoot is still one of the stars introduced to us from behind the WWL radio mic. The live element in radio today is still my favorite part of, of this, this medium. Live and so intimate, one-on-one -on -one interaction. Scoot remembers the best compliment he ever got, a woman recounting rushing to the hospital to see her critically injured father. She wasn't even sure that her dad would be alive when she got there. And she said, you made me laugh during that drive. And I thought, if I've done that, as simple as that is, I've done my job. Right around the time Scoot started there, WWL took on a higher profile job, becoming the voice of that new team playing at Tulane Stadium. 870 became the place where we could vent to Hap Glotty after the Saints lost. Later, we'd vent through the cutout hole in our Aints bags to Buddy D. The new management were like, who's this guy, Buddy D? <laughs> when Loyola sold WWL Radio to a new company in 1989, Deliberto was nearly a casualty. The new company's managers had no clue about New Orleans accents or New Orleans characters until they got a lesson from WWL brand manager Diane Newman. Should we hire him? I said, yeah, yesterday. And then years later, finally, a broadcast many thought they'd never hear. Snap, placement, kick by Hartley, and it is, it is good! It's good! It's good! <laughs> Pigs have flown! Hell is frozen over! The Saints are on their way to the Super Bowl! Some goosebump creating moments etched in our souls need no explanation. The radio call is what we remember. You don't remember the TV announcer. You remember the radio announcer, Jim Henderson, pigs flying and hell is frozen over. Everyone remembers Jim Henderson, pigs have flown, hell is frozen over, the Saints are going to the Super Bowl. Tomorrow in part two, something else we all remember. I went to the studio and I just put my arms around Garland because he broke down and cried. 
he was, he was a hero. He was a hero. That led to the recovery. More from inside the WWL newsroom. Meg Farris, Eyewitness News.